Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Kettle Falls, Washington, just west of town, just west of the Columbia River, and this outcrop right along a busy US 395 is the favorite outcrop in the entire state for the authors of the second edition of the Roadside of Washington book, the geology book. Let's take a look at this outcrop. It's not something I normally do because there's a bunch of traffic, but if this is the author's favorite outcrop, we should take a look. Let's do it. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. You should own this book if you don't. It's really well done. So here's the northeastern corner of the state of Washington. Idaho's over here, British Columbia's up here. Of course, there's a bunch of Washington to the south, to the southwest, and to the west. We are right here at the junction of Washington State Route 20 and US 395. And we are truly just north of this junction on the west bank of the Columbia. Now, right off the bat, I'm reminded that this is at the Kettle Dome, and we're at the margin of the Kettle Dome. So the Okanagan Dome, the Kettle Dome, are two metamorphic core complexes, which are lower plate metamorphic rocks that are lifted as upper plate brittle rocks are sliding away. And four winters ago, I was talking about turtle shells where this is a turtle shell and this is a turtle shell. And as we lift the turtle shell, we slide stuff off of that slippery turtle shell, both to the east and to the west. So uh, it's no accident that we're at this highway outcrop here. We're right at the uh, eastern edge of the Kettle Dome, and I'm guessing that's what our detail is going to tell us about. And these beautiful myelatinized rocks are telling us we're right at that normal fault, that detachment fault. Uh, I'm at a place locally called Barney's Junction. Locality for highly deformed gneiss and amphibolite. So one of the really nice things about this second edition is Marley and Daryl take us uh, west to east on State Route 20 across northern Washington. Republic Sherman Creek Summit, and then dropping down to our area today. Look at this. Highly deformed rock at Marley and Darrell's favorite Washington outcrop. Boom! We're here. Amphibolite nice. Sheath fold with a three-dimensional geometry similar to a sock. Recumbent fold. Okay called Barney's Junction, this exposure is worth taking some time to explore because it also contains myelinitic zones, abundant pegmatite, and lozenge-shaped bodies of green peroxine-bearing gneiss. Some spectacular folds are exposed in the outcrop on the east side. Wow.
I know you're waiting for commentary. I don't know if I have much to say. Except this myelatinized stuff is like warm taffy. And we're right at the sliding plane of the metamorphic core complex. The Kettle Dome is just to the west of us and we have the right temperatures and pressures along this detachment fault or this normal fault uh, to have brittle deformation above and ductal deformation down below and this is in the upper part of the ductal I think and it just makes the most beautiful looking rocks You're like, well, I know that. Why don't you tell me something more meaningful in detail? I can't. Here's some of the pegmatite, some of the coarser grained magmas that are part of this for some reason. I'm in the shady side, but I think this is maybe better for photography. Plus, I'm not right on the highway. It's loud enough here. Barney's Junction. I have no doubt Marley was snapping hundreds of photos here. I can imagine Marley and Daryl spending a day just really going crazy with this outcrop. All the detail. And Marley was a graduate student that studied under Daryl. at the University of Washington back in the 1980s. Oh my. Well, I can see why it's their favorite outcrop. Every step, there's another geometry to enjoy. And this must be a, a place that a lot of ge wow, there must be a lot of geology classes must have been at this location. Goodness sakes, it just gets better. So I don't really know what to do with metamorphic core complexes. Uh, we studied them uh, a few episodes back at the crazy Eocene alphabet. That was a few winters ago. Uh, they're extensional structures that are extensional during the crazy Eocene. Between 50 and 45 million years ago, these um, were doing this cracking, this sliding east and west, and these uplifting turtle shells, metamorphic rock, are coming to the surface. I know that that's the regional story, and at the same time that we're doing the turtle shell sliding, we're also doing strike slip faulting and forming sandboxes and having all sorts of crazy Eocene magmas, uh, the bimodal volcanism of the chalice magmas and the, the rollback story of Jeff Tepper and so on. So all that's happening regionally and I'm comfortable with that. 
but I don't remember or maybe never learned when are we making the metamorphic rock? It's not during the Eocene, is it? And is the metamorphic rock exposed in the lower plate of these metamorphic core complexes? Deep rock that was plunged deeply along with the rest of the crystalline core? As I'm saying this out loud to you right now, I'm, I'm really rusty with those concepts. And so I don't think I can do much more regionally than just show you a beautiful outcrop. And we can just enjoy the geometries and everything else, but for me, that's never enough. I want the regional story, and I don't think I have it. But at least this can be a little uh, dipping my toe into the reminder that these metamorphic core complexes in northeastern Washington, over into western Montana, up to southern British Columbia, down to southern Idaho, there's a regional story with these metamorphic core complexes, and uh, I haven't done a whole lot with them. And I don't know if the time is right to do that. I don't think that's going to be a featured part of when we start thinking about Alaska or British Columbia, in other words, this coming winter. Maybe they are. Are these metamorphic core complexes, Eocene and age, important enough to fold into our study of Alaska tectonics. I doubt it, but who knows? So to close this video, maybe I can just give you a sense of why I'm different than so many other geologists. Not in a good way, necessarily, it's just how I'm different. I like regional stories. I like taking detail like this and connecting it with other places. Why are these rocks here and not everywhere? They're Eocene? Okay. They're part of a metamorphic core complex? Sounds good to me. Are there metamorphic core complexes in Alaska? Are there metamorphic core complexes in northern British Columbia? I know there are some in southern British Columbia, Stacia Gordon. How far south do these things go, these metamorphic core complexes, with these kinds of myelinites right at the detachment surface? It's an extensional story 50 million years ago. Well, how important is that? from Alaska down to Central America. That's the kind of thing that I want to do this winter. And you're like, I thought you were doing Alaska A to Z. Well, I'm calling it Alaska A to Z, but I'm really just trying to connect what's here in Washington with what's up in Alaska. And by doing that, I'm suddenly dealing with much, <laughs> much of the Cordillera of Western North America. This odd crop is waiting for you. Barney's Junction, easy access, US 395, just west of Kettle Falls, Washington. Thank you, everybody. I love you, and goodbye from Northeastern Washington. <laughs> wow. Well, these slabs are impressive. <laughs>